Thanks, guys. I'm joined here today with men's basketball forward Abdul Bundu. Thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. All right, so let's get right into it. So, what's it like coming from far away and you know adjusting to life here at Quinnipiac, especially as a D1 athlete? Uh, it's a little different. You know, things do move at a faster pace for me every day. Uh, my life is basically scheduled around basketball. So anytime I have something to do and they tell me I have to be at this at this time, I just have to do it, stop what I'm doing and go ahead and, you know, attend to whatever they want me to do. So the pace is a little different, like I said, but it's something I've gotten used to over the past year and a half. So Right. Do you get to see your family ever? Do you have friends come visit you? How do you communicate back home? Uh me is just it via phone call and FaceTime. Honestly, you know, my parents are actually pretty busy this year. Last year they made a they made a game, you know, and I was excited to see them. This year they weren't able to make a game, so you know it was just they're just busy there because they have to work on their schedule and then try to find the space in my schedule to fit them in it. So you know we just keep in touch. You know my mom texts me every morning, sends me like a motivational quote. You know I speak to my dad here and there. I, I started texting my little brothers more and more. You know because one of them is about to graduate from high school. So and as for my friends, I have a friend that attends school in math. So you know. I was probably planning on going up there the, with the week of the 22nd to celebrate her birthday with her. So I try to keep in touch as much as possible, but most of the communications between me and my family and my friends is either FaceTime or just the text messages. That's great. So there was an article written about you and it talked about how you came to America at a really young age. What was that like for you? Uh, different, because, <laughs> you know, it was a shocking experience because the whole thing I didn't know what was really going on I, honestly you know I was just in my house at the moment uncle told me wake up it's dark like damn near like two three o'clock in the morning and it was just a lot going on next thing you know I'm going from Sierra Leone to Senegal from Senegal all the way to the United States and I'm meeting my parents for the first time in seven years so you know the whole thing was it was a lot to take in at the moment but I was very appreciative, like, towards the end, but it was, <laughs> it was really a lot to take in. Yeah, no, I can definitely see that being a lot. So do you have any memories, like, what is something that really stands out to you when you think back on that experience of coming here and adjusting to life in America? Uh, I'm living with my parents now. Like, I go from living with my grandparents, my uncle, my grandmothers, and my nieces and cousins to actually living with my parents, my mom and dad, and my little brothers and my older brothers. So I got to go from a lifestyle of uh, uncle, auntie, to a mom and dad lifestyle, you know, calling them mom and dad. Because when I first came in, about a year, it took me a year to adjust to the mom and dad call. I used to call them uncle and auntie. <laughs> and, you know, after a while, I think they got tired of me because they said, well, your mom and dad. And I'm like, all right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in the article, it talked about how you were really thankful for the opportunities that you have. How does playing college basketball give you that opportunity for a better life? Uh, playing college basketball, but first of all, the biggest thing I can say thank you for is it allows my education to be paid for, you know, and my parents don't have to struggle as far as worrying about me being in school and having, like, them having to take out loans and pay for me. So that's one of the biggest things. Second of all, as like a pathway for my little brothers because they both started playing basketball. They're both really good. They're both like six feet and above. So if they can do the same thing I'm doing, that saves less work for my parents in order because it was a struggle enough to get us over here. It was also it was a struggle to maintain like everything that we have now. And me growing up, the least I could do to say thank you was to try and find a way for me to go to school without them having to worry about it. And basketball was my only leeway. And you know, every day I, you know, I thank my middle school coach for pressing me like, "Hey, come play basketball, come play basketball," because I didn't start playing until eighth grade. And he really told me to stick with it. You know, he calls me here and there just to check up on me, make sure, make sure like I'm not being toyed with as far as with the coaching. You know, I'm at the right place. And he loves Quinnipiac. He hasn't been up here, but from what he's seen and what he's heard, he, he loves Quinnipiac. So every day, you know, just being able to be in school, knowing I'm going to be able to graduate with a degree or two, you know, that, that really helps a lot. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I wish you the best in the rest of your basketball career and with your education. That's all I have. I'm Carrie Golden. Back to you guys at the desk.